I'll tell you what. Following what the Duchess said there, I have a few pointers. For starters, the woman refers to Alice as a dish, which is offensive. I'd rather Alice was called a delicacy. As for the bit about porcelain, I don't know about you, but porcelain is an actual dish. Not as in food, but an actual dish, piece of cutlery, that you put food on. Just how she can eat that and still remain in such good trim figure, I do not know. And she should go out to hunt her own food. God forbid she learned that she has diabetes type 2. The way that woman looks and still doesn't try to lose weight just because she's in Alice's Wonderland doesn't mean she's immune to human ailments. Do you also think the game game's making a point about the elites? I mean, in Alice's world, women are courtesans with stick-thin waists living in desolate poverty, whilst the Duchess has a mound of food, a gigantic girth, and can afford to have you procure strange edible flying pigs using a weapon which is which has a well, that's the other thing, isn't it? That weapon is clearly a mick take of all punchlines referring to miniguns. I mean, you can take out of that the line, pepper them up, grind away your enemies, spray the enemy, clove through the opposition, as in clove of garlic, lay down the heat, as in hot peppers, and some other good memorable titles, no doubt. I think this is also trying to make another point. I mean, you all know the saying when referring to the idea of something that could never actually happen. You say something so unlikely, for example, um, that kid over there is going to get an A-level, A-star, and he comes from a poverty-stricken area. The chances of that happen are the same as pigs being able to fly. Now, just to prove a point, in Alice's world, as you can see over there you have a flying pig snout. Being the fact that it's part of a pig suggests that pigs can fly in this game which is setting up the example of this entire game isn't it really? It's trying to say pigs can fly which means in the world of Alice in Wonderland anything can happen. The impossible is possible here. Which I think is a good example to set. Telling people that anything is possible as long as you believe is a very good point to say and in Alice's Wonderland these are all her beliefs and imaginations brought together so in effectiveness this is what she believe what you believe Thank comes you true so much for the snout. now go away sometimes as I play this game I start to I kind of forget the fact that Alice is meant to come from a rich background I mean they don't really mention it but if you uh, have a look at the original Alice in Wonderland stories on, um, on say, Wikipedia or something, it explains to you that Alice is actually meant to be a female based in Oxford. That she's like the daughter of some, I'm assuming, middle class family in Oxford. The fact her dad's a photographer and they live in the countryside seems to support this idea. I mean, it's, it's not generally a good thing, but picnics is something you associate with the rich, isn't it? I mean... If I, I mean, I'm not particularly from a rich background, so if we go out for, say, a picnic, you usually have, like, um, a bed cover to sit on. We most certainly will not have a basket, or like, um, a woven wooden basket. You'd use instead, maybe, I don't know, just, like, some ice box or something that you can carry the food in. Or you just bring in an actual Tesco bag. Or Morrison's or Marks and Spencer's or any other superstore chain. But you wouldn't you wouldn't bring it in like the basket like the other ones. Which is I think a shame because we should try to get back to our roots more, our natural things. I'm a very strong believer in um, you shouldn't refuse to do it just because it's not something commonly known. Like I I'm a believer that horse riding is not a sport that should be kept to just the rich or that um, all our tennis players and stuff should come from just Scotland I I believe that there should be a variety there should be a belief among 
many of the people irrelevant that it's not class status that defines what sport you take part in. It should be willingness to do it. It's just a shame that for the most part um, very few people, people believe like that. It's like I don't believe in the idea of private schools because I don't believe in the idea of grammar schools or standard schools. I believe that you should have universally schools should work hard to achieve the best for their students irrelevant of pay. It shouldn't be, oh, we'll work harder because you're going to pay us, because as a private school, you're going to pay us more than any government school. It should be, we're going to work hard because we want these children to have a good future, because we want them to be the best. Which is why I don't like Oxford or Cambridge either. Because for the most part, to join them, you just need to be rich. Because if you're rich, you go to a private school, you get the education necessary to be able to attend Oxford or Cambridge. Or Harvard or Yale or any of those other usually rich people. I mean, there's not a lot. You get, like, the occasional good story where it's like, oh, person from a poor background goes to one of these major universities, goes on to be greatness. But for the most part, they're usually from a middle-class background. You don't get genuinely actual people from a working class who, by some miracle, unless they're amazing, truly amazing, manage to get to these schools. Did anyone else just notice that over there... Alice's giant statue is crying tears of corruption. I don't know if that's important. This is also a point I'm going to make about going small. There are some things you don't actually notice unless you go small, like things you'd let just pass by. Like when I saw that rock over there, we didn't see it with like the jumpy mushroom on it. It's just over there. All these tear, these teeth hidden around the corner. You, unless you look round all your corners, you let things, you don't notice things. It's like on Call of Duty. You know, or in like a police raid. Always check your corners because there's bound to be something there that you just can't see at first glance. Well, despite walking into like a blood zone earlier, everything looks quite nice. There's nothing seems to be wrong in this nature zone. <laughs> My God, we've struck, we've struck oil, Alice. You're rich. Although for once I don't want to strike oil because seemingly there's a lot of it in Alice's Wonderland. Plus you can't really bring it over to our world where oil actually matters. I mean I don't even know what they would use it for in Alice's world. Because they seem to conveniently have everything they need like the never ending sun. Which is for some reason sunny all year round. Or the fact Alice's butterflies. You know all these things seem to support the idea that um, what we find as necessary in our world is not necessarily there. The railway running through Wonderland sounds charming but inefficient. Noise and smoke, like snips and snails perhaps. Best to forget that train. A mock turtle as conductor, oh no I don't think that will do at all. I kind of wonder if I can jump onto that, that giant ledge earlier but I don't think I can. Which is a shame, because I have a necessity to explore everything. It's like a desire. That is deforestation on a larger scale than I'm used to. I imagine that's how Americans deal with the idea of nature parks. Or national parks. Don't think I've forgotten that for a long time. The Americans happily did deforestation. I think, wasn't there something like one of your mountains where they removed the top half of it used to be forest and it's all gone now. I'm sure there's other examples of where corporations have ignored ordinary rules of environment. People seem to forget that. You need trees to live, you need them to take in our carbon and dioxide and exchange it for oxygen. Paper is, all, paper is all well and useful for recording things, but how long can paper last? That's why sometimes if you look back in history there are actual, what do you call it, cultures where they used to write down everything on tablets of gold. Now I'm not suggesting we do that now because that's very, very expensive. But they did it because they realised gold, unlike paper, would last. It's not affected by time, it's only affected by heat. So if you kept it in the right place you could essentially record your country's history for all of time until it's discovered by some sort of corporation that decide they'll melt down the gold because it's worth more to them like that. 
than historical. Which is why I say he's one of the fundamental corrupting flaws present in our human society. The desire for wealth. I mean, what can, what, really, what can money and paper do for you is why I say. Can you eat paper and live? Can you drink jewellery and survive? No. You need food, you need water, you need shelter to live under, a cave to live in. Most of these luxuries are pointless. Now I'm going to buy an upgrade with this teeth money. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I don't. I think I'd upgrade the pepper gun. It is probably, the grinder is probably the most useful weapon in this game. I mean, you can use it at long range and not get properly hurt. And other things. Ah, so they only go up to level 4 the upgrades for the pepper grinder guns. Well that's all well and good. I, I feel some sort of sorriness for if there were actual hobos living in that train. Because they've just lost their home. And probably their lives. It's a shame.